Merhaba sevgili seyirciler. Aramızda müzik var ile yeniden birlikteyiz. Bu da peştedeyiz ve burada bulunmamızın nedeni piyanist komple. Budapest'te 1873 yılında üç şehrin birleşmesiyle kurulur. Buda, Obuda ve Pest. İsmini de böyle alır. Ama elbette hikayesi çok daha eskilerde, eski taş devrinde başlar. Önce Keltler şehir kurmuş bu topraklarda. Ardından Romalılar, Hunlar, Doğu Gotlar ve Avarlar işgal etmiş. Macarlar 896 yılında Prens Arpad liderliğinde gelmiş. 1526'da Türkler almış şehri. 160 yıl Türk hakimiyetinde kalmış. Sonrası Habsburglular dönemi. 1. ve 2. Dünya Savaşları, Alman ve Rus işgalleri, Sovyet yönetimi ve nihayet 1989 yılında Cumhuriyet. Tarihin zor süreçleri bunlar. Savaşı, işgali, ve farklı devletlerin egemenliklerini yaşamak şehirler için sancılı ve acı verici. Ama diğer yandan bu değişimler kültürel ve sanatsal olarak zenginleştiriyor şehirleri. Bugünün insanına zengin bir miras iletilmesini sağlıyor. Bu da peşte de olduğu gibi. Macaristan ve klasik müzik denince akla ilk olarak Frans Bist geliyor. Macar besteci ömrünün son beş yılını bu evde geçirmiş. Gelin birlikte gezelim. Madame de Makoş, we are here in Franz Bist house. We are, we know that he lives here uh, the last five years of his life. And uh, what does uh, visitors can see here. You are welcome. Uh, welcome in the Lisbeth Memorial Museum and the Research Center. It is a part of the Academy of Music. We are in the building of the old Academy of Music. And um, uh, we can see here least one time uh, apartment uh, at the Academy when he lived here, as you mentioned, as a president of the Academy. And he had also the master class for his uh, piano students. Uh, he uh, had uh, his lessons here when we are in his one-time drawing room in his flat. Uh, his flat consisted of an um, uh, entrance room, um, then the dining room, the study at bedroom, and the drawing room where we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, this drawing, uh, the door of the drawing room leads to the concert hall, which mm -hmm. was also in his lifetime a concert hall. And then we have also here a research library in the building, which is open to everybody. And the visitors, of course, can uh, uh, mainly uh, visit the museum. And uh, now we are in this, uh, in this room, you can see list original uh, uh, pieces of furniture in that corner. And um, 
Uh, also, it's very important uh, that you of uh, Beethoven mm -hmm. because it was also in this lifetime here. Mm -hmm. uh, and Liszt uh, got this little size copy, which is now here. It was, uh, of course, uh, in lifetime of his lifetime also here. Perhaps the most interesting pieces of furniture are the pianos the and the instruments. And the yes, From it is a, a very special instrument. One yes, one. Uh, it is a combined instrument. The upper keyboard is a piano, the lower is a harmonium, mm -hmm. and it is the only one. Uh, from the uh, type of these combined instruments, which uh, is playable, and we does it still work? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we this have restored it, and this, uh, all, all the instruments are working. Yeah, and uh, one time uh, in a year, we also play some uh, instruments. It is ah. the nights of the museums uh, at the end of ah, June. We have to see that. Yes, that would be fantastic, really. It's yes, beautiful. but we have also a CD with all the instruments. You want to write notes? Yes. You take the, the, yes. the, the, the piano? Yes. Just play it? Yeah. It's, it's a great idea. Uh, yes, yes, it was a, a secret. It was a, a surprise. And there are no more such a, a composing desk like yeah. that one. Yeah. Only Wagner has uh, such a composing desk. And it is a, a, a good only for some sequence of chords or some harmonies. But you know, at least composed by heart. Yeah. Ülkelerin ulusal sanatlarını keşfetmek oldukça heyecan verici. O ülkeleri tarihi, sosyal, kültürel olarak tanımamızı sağlıyor. Biz de Macaristan'ı yakından tanımak için Macar ressam ve heykel tıraşların eserlerini görmeye geldik. Macar Ulusal Galerisi birkaç bloktan oluşuyor. Biz resim ve heykel koleksiyonunun sergilendiği B bloğu geziyoruz. On dördüncü yüzyıldan on dokuzuncu yüzyıla uzanan muhteşem resim koleksiyonu ziyaretçilerin beğenisine sunulmuş. Koleksiyon kronolojik olarak sıralanmış. Macar sanatçılar özellikle 19. yüzyılda uluslararası çapta tanınmaya başlanmış. Bu dönemin önemli Macar sanatçıları Mihali Munkaksi, Bertalan Şkeli ve Yula Benzur'un başyapıtları da burada sergileniyor. Eğer Budapest'te de Macar sanatından fazlasını görmek istiyorsanız, Kahramanlar Meydanı'nın solundaki görkemli binaya gelmelisiniz. Burası Güzel Sanatlar Müzesi. Yunanistan'daki tapınakları andıran müze binası, 1900 ve 1906 yılları arasında mimar Albert Schgedans ve yardımcısı Flöp Herzog tarafından tasarlanmıştır. Müzenin galerisinde Rafael, Pissarro, Goya, Vermeer, Rembrandt, Dürer ve Rubens gibi Avrupalı ustaların eserleri bulunuyor. Ancak Güzel Sanatlar Müzesi'nde sadece tablolar yok. Antik dönemlerden kalma birçok heykel Macar arkeologlar tarafından gün ışığına çıkartılmış Mısır hazineleri ve Orta Çağ'dan kalma gotik altar panolarda burada sergileniyor. Müze hem koleksiyonu hem de düzenlediği büyük ölçekli geçici sergiler ile 
her yıl yüz binlerce ziyaretçi ağırlıyor. Bazı mekanlarda sanat yoktur ama sanatın ve sanatçının izi vardır. Budapest'te de opera binasının karşısındaki 120 yıllık kahve hazm vez yani sanatçı kahvesi bu mekanlardan biri. Bir temsil öncesi veya sonrası sanatçıların fotoğrafları altındaki kahvenizi yudumlar biraz kitap okursanız sanat sarar ruhunuzu. Macaristan'ın bir diğer sanat sembolü çigan müziği. Budapest'te de yerel yemekler eşliğinde uzun saatler çigan müziği dinleyebileceğiniz birçok mekan var. Çigan müziği kültürel bir karışımın ürünü. Yaklaşık bin yıl önce Hindistan'dan yola çıkan ve göçebe olarak birçok değişik ülkede varlığını sürdüren roman topluluğuna mal edilmiş. Ama Macaristan'da çok farklı ve özgün bir karakter kazanmış. Macar çigan müziği Balkanlarda duyulan roman müziğine de İspanya'nın ünlü cipsi melodilerine de benzemiyor. Müzisyenler tarafından yılların birikimi ve aile gelenekleriyle sürdürülen bu müzik türü zengin bir repertuara sahip, durgun ve geniş melodilerle başlayıp gittikçe hızlanıyor. Daha çok keman ve simbal gibi çalgılarla seslendiriliyor ve yapısı doğaçlama yapmaya çok uygun.
Okay, I am very, very happy to be here with you in Budapest and uh, in uh, the Congress Centrum. You had a concert a few hours ago, the first concert, and you're gonna, you're gonna have another one in a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a busy day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is it difficult? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've, I've been doing it since I was four years old, so I wow. don't feel it difficult. But first of all, I would like to tell you that it is a real pleasure to meet you, and I'm very happy to, to meet you here in my wonderful city in Budapest, and I'm very, very happy much. that you like it. Uh, so back to the concert. This is, like, there is a physical part, because I need to play the piano, mm -hmm. and there is the mindset, the right mindset. So I think I prepared to do two, two or three shows a day because uh, the first time I played the piano, I was four years old. Uh, so um, I'm getting 44 this year. That means I've been playing the piano 40 for years. 40 years. Yeah, that's great, yeah. man. And uh, when I look at you, I, f uh, I notice that you have a big energy, <laughs> really. Because between the two concerts, you also do this uh, interview with us. You know, what I usually say, and I think it's, it's, it's really true, if I play music to people, I don't lose energy, I win energy. Oh. I will be much more energized than before the concert. So it's a very interesting thing because I think people, the audience, they give me their positive energy as well, so I can collect it and I feel very positive at the moment, even if I played almost two hours. Let's start with your childhood. How was your childhood? I had a very nice childhood. Uh, I'm not from a musician family, so my father is an engineer, mm. but they were always very supportive to give me the chance to be a musician, and that was the most important. So they couldn't give me professional advice about music, but they gave me the most that a parent can give to a child is the support to be, to, to be what I wanted to be. So uh, I finished the Hungarian Music Academy. I finished all the professional, you know, universities, conservatory, et cetera. And I'm very proud because uh, the Hungarian musical education is one of the best of the world. And perhaps the reason of my success is the Hungarian musical education. I think so. Um, have you discovered your music talent? What was the age that you discovered that uh, you, you love music and you want to when do I was four, When I was four years old, my sister, who was six, she received a small pianino, a small piano, and she started to learn the piano. And uh, I was <laughs> you you know, following her and, you know, without the music sheet, I was able to learn a couple of songs she was, she was learning. So... When I went to the music school the first time, uh, I was able to play with two fingers because I learned it from myself. That's just, just by ear after hearing, hearing That's her great. play the piano. So I think, you know, it's, 
it's in my blood, it's in my genes, yeah. you know, I was, I was born with it. As I am. Yeah. Uh, then you understand I, I, I, it. I was singing all, all the time at, at home. My father was saying, that's enough, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you have this, this in your blood, then Absolutely. it's coming. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you graduated from Franz Liszt's yes, Academy. Yes, Academy right? of Music and, and uh, uh, very proud of proud You didn't of continue to the classic music. Uh, Why? You know, when I'm, I, I am a well trained classical pianist because I, when I'm practicing at home, even today, I practice with Bach, Chopin, Liszt, etc. So I needed to keep my shape, my technique in the best, best way. But what I started to feel a couple of years ago that I have my own thoughts, I have my own messages, what I wanted to share with the people and, and I started to compose and that was a very important moment of my life when I decided to go on stage only with my own compositions. And uh, I think that moment has changed my life forever. When you did your first concert? Uh, my first, well, I think I was five years old after one year of learning the piano. I regularly went to competitions as well. So in Hungary, if you are a professional musician, that's something like sport. You are, you're training every day, you have the best teachers, the best professors, and, and I think This is really important because my musical background is, is, is a really high quality education. What was the breaking point of your career, musical career? I think the decision when I, when I decided to play my own music, that was, that was the most important moment. Because from that point, everything started to happen very quickly. Yeah. You know, my first album, my first success, the first concert, and I think People join me because of my music, not because of my personality, because I don't really, I'm not often giving interviews. I don't really care about talking about myself because what I think, if they listen to my music or, or they listen to my, my concerts, they will know much more about yeah. me than if I start to talk. Mm -hmm. So I think music is the key, a connection between me and people mm -hmm. and they feel the same and they come in more and more every year. <laughs> and what I feel at the moment that we are before a big boom, because, yeah. because uh, every year we double or triple the number of the concerts, the international concerts, and it's happening very fast at the moment. Everybody love your music. Thank you very much. Yeah, really, in Turkey also? Yeah, I think so. You've been there anyway. You're going to come again? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, how do you describe your music? It's very difficult uh, to describe something you create because it's, it's like a modern classical music, but, but mm. very difficult to put into a genre. Yeah. But they say it's modern classical, or I, I cannot describe it by words, because music is How above- about music? Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. I think, but I believe that music is above words, so yeah. it's very difficult to describe it by you know, one or two words. Uh, I want to ask you especially about your composition process. What was the things who affected you? Yet, that's a very interesting question. And uh, my concert, what will be on the 19th of May in Istanbul, we call it Pure Piano. Pure Piano is about me and the piano on the stage. Plus, I'm talking about my inspiration and the stories of the pieces I created. So this is a very good answer to your question. So I would like to invite you to the show and you will know a lot about the inspiration and the, the reason of the, the, the compose, composing. But I can tell you one example, which, which can show you sometimes how easy to create a piece. I usually practice at home a lot, obviously every day. And sometimes my little daughter, who is five years old, sometimes he comes into the room to listen to me playing. And one day she sat on my lap and started to hit the keys on the piano in front of her. And she just left the room. And from those few notes, I was able to create an entire oh, wow, piece. That's great. So inspiration is kids, friends, my home country, the travelings, people, loves, women, you know, life. And this, this is what... This is, this is beautiful. Did you watch, uh, there is a cat play piano and some orchestra uh, driver took these uh, melodies yes. and 
put in a big orchestra. Yeah, yeah. Everything it can happen. Unbelievable. Yeah, everything can happen in music. <laughs> and this is this is why I love to be a musician, because this is a language. Yeah. You know, even okay, now we speak in English, but if we couldn't speak the same language, you would understand me if I played the piano because this is a way of communication. Yeah. I watch so many concerts uh, and so many shows of your, of your uh, musical uh, career, you know? Thank you. Uh, it, it was amazing. Also, you play with the cellos, with the viola, yeah. and, the, and this combination, it sounds great. I love, I love to, but for me, it's very important not to play the music and to, to, to, to bring some messages through as well. I mean, at the same time, so if you don't have something what you would like to share with people, it's only entertainment. But if you have something to share, that's art. That's, that's, and I would that's like to beautiful. think myself as an artist, and I always have a clear message what I would like to share with the people. Beautiful. What do you think about the Turkish audience and Turkish uh, music? Three years ago, I had a concert in Zorlu Center, and that was an amazing night an amazing audience, and I can't wait to go back because I had a very deep experience because I felt that they reacted to the music on a much higher level than an average audience. I think they understood me. And this is a very good feeling when you speak and someone understands you. And I can't wait to go back and play them again. Did you think about uh, to, to make a collaboration with the Turkish musicians? Of course, it's, uh, I'm, I'm always very happy to collaborate. Uh, it's only, you know, it's always the question of time. But in the future, I would like to, and perhaps today, something will happen. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> We're going to plan this for yes. sure later on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm to do, this. do you have any new project? Um, what I usually do, if we go to a big sports arena, I go with 100, 150 musicians on the stage. Wow. With a whole symphonic orchestra, big classical choir. I have my rock, rock, drum, rock drummer friends with me, cellist, violinist. That's the biggest production we have, but we usually go to sports arenas. The opposite of that is pure piano, what I, what I already mentioned to you, which I love, because that's a different type of, of yeah. show. But there I have the chance to talk about my thoughts, my inspiration, my home country, my culture. Uh, and, and I think in my heart, the two different production are equal, but some prefer the big one, some prefer the small one. Yeah. It's up to the audience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the digi digital world? Negative and positive influ influences f uh, to the music uh, business, you know? Uh, Selling music is very easy nowadays, and I like it because if, if I hear something in the radio, I can buy it immediately from a lot of you know sites. I like that because we need, as a musicians, we need to accept the fact that CDs and LPs they're not sell, selling anymore. You know, no, it's, what, it's finished. we are selling we are selling the concert tickets, but it's good. And if you would like to sell your CD, you, it's more like a, a promotional material yeah, for it's, a musician, it's kind of horror, yeah. but it's okay. It's okay with me because the world is changing. You cannot go, you know, opposite to the trends. So this is a fact that, that something has changed around us. But what I love that live music is always will be live music. So they cannot, you know, copy it or yeah. books. You cannot copy a book. Yeah. You need to buy a book if you would like to read yeah. it. And all the artists and musicians now they win their life by live performances yes because the selling of this uh, i mean uh, streaming 10 million yes it doesn't cost anything but it enough. means streaming is a very good commercial for the artist and live concerts are going up yeah. there are more and more live concerts yeah. so we cannot say this is a disaster no this because, is not because disaster. we are selling yeah. a lot of yeah. concerts you get at the same time yeah what can you tell us about your one day how you how you live your day uh it depends. Just let me think about an average day when I'm not traveling back and forth. But uh, there are things I need to do every day. One is to practice the piano. Two or three hours. If I, if I cannot practice, I'm getting nervous because I need you know, I, my muscles <laughs> and my brain. I need that two or three hours just to 
dive into music, switch off my telephone and, you know, doing just music and nothing else. Do you sleep well? Uh, I sleep very well. Okay. <laughs> Do you eat well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Are you doing sport or something? I'm doing sports every day. This is what I wanted to mention to you because when you ask me how I can do two concerts or three concerts yeah. a day, that means you need to... I jog almost 10 kilometers every day. Because 10 kilometers? 10 kilometers because wow, this, is, this is the physical part. And when you speak on the stage, you play very fast. And after a very fast song, you need to talk to the people. If you are not in the right shape... Yeah. <laughs> you, you need to, and people don't like that. Yeah. They, they don't like to hear that. <laughs> That's great. Do you have any hobbies? <laughs> it's music, you know. Only? My hobby is music. I love sports. I like to, to go on bike, to jump, jump on the bike and go to nice places. Of course, I like to be with friends, family. This is the most important. I have two kids, a son and a little girl. They, they, you know, I have a beautiful life because I do my... Job is my hobby. So when, when I give concerts, this is, I don't care about, you know, money. I don't care about business. You love your, what you're doing. Because I love to do that. Yeah, that's so, great. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank this you. It was a great pleasure for me. Thank you very much. Sevgili seyirciler, bir bölümümüzün daha sonuna geldik. Budapeşte'deydik, Havaşi ile birlikteydik. Aramızda müzik vardı. Sizin de aranızda sınırlar değil, sevgi, hoşgörü, sanat ve müzik olsun. Hoşçakalın.